Ballistic's passive ability allows for him to carry a third weapon, and his ultimate turns that weapon into its maximum level, which I thought was just like gold, right? But it turns out there's a little bit of spice to it. I believe that Ballistic can turn an RE45 into its care package form, and the Rampage is fully charged when you have it in the back pocket. So that's the kind of stuff that like I didn't realize is a thing. So I thought it would be really fun to make a weapon tier list based on which weapons are the best to keep in the back pocket for Ballistic. Are y'all ready for this tier list? So we're gonna try every single weapon, put it in the back pocket in the sling. I wish there was a way to just like get your ultimate like immediately. Also, is that a Nessie? It's so cute. What? I found a Nessie! That's so wholesome. What? So we're gonna be ranking all of the weapons based off of how good they are in the sling. The other thing that makes it important is understanding two things. How good is the weapon by itself as just a extra third weapon? And how good is the weapon when you use the ultimate? That's gonna be the criteria that we judge each weapon because even though some weapons may be great when you use the ultimate, they may be terrible as just a third weapon. But you can live your life without even using the third weapon. Weapon. So I think that the utility that they have as a weapon during the ultimate is going to be a little bit more important for the ranking of every single one of these, okay? Let's start with the wingman. The wingman is great by itself, right? The wingman is one of the few weapons that doesn't require attachments to be good. By default, like even without using the ultimate, wingman is probably one of the best third weapons you could ask for. Now, when using the ultimate, the only big downside it has is that it has a digi threat which I'm not a big fan of the fact that it defaults to digi threat. I actually don't like the digi threat on the wingman. But the fast reload is the thing that makes it so worth it. And I think it also has a skull piercer on it. So if you land a headshot, if I, if I can land a headshot, oh my God, I'm so bad at this game. If you land a headshot, it does 100 damage versus 80 damage. I think the wingman with the ultimate is not too bad. Having skull piercer guaranteed is pretty huge. Having the fast reload is, is a big deal because the wingman doesn't have that much ammo. Overall, I, I wish it didn't have digi threat. I wish you had like the option to make it like a, a red dot site because I'm not a big fan of digi threat on the wingman, but that's just a personal opinion. Yeah, so the wingman A's here. I think it plays very well even without the ultimate and during the ultimate, it's decent. That's why the wingman belongs in A tier. Next up, we got the longbow. Most of the snipers are actually going to have a huge disadvantage in this tier list because because snipers have kind of mid iron sights. I do think that the longbow may not be one of the better weapons to have in your sling. I think that there's definitely a lot of better choices, even for snipers. In general, without the ultimate, I'm not a big fan of like rocking a default longbow. It takes forever to reload. It does decent damage, but it's like, you know, the iron sights aren't like the greatest in the world. So I'm not a huge fan of that, but with the ultimate, you end up with this like really good digi threat sight, the four by eight sight that's like really nuts. I think it also has Skull Piercer, which is why it does so much damage, right? Look at the headshot damage. Yeah, so having Skull Piercer is not that bad either. With the ultimate, it's not terrible, but I also think that like you get the most value with your ultimate when you're around your teammates and not all of your teammates are going to have that kind of range. So the problem that I have with it is that I just don't think it utilizes ballistics abilities to its fullest extent. For that reason, I think D tier is fair for the longbow. Like, let's just be honest. I feel like the longbow just isn't the play. Next up, we got the charge rifle. The charge rifle, thankfully, doesn't even have that many attachments, but the only attachment that you'd ever want with the charge rifle is range. It definitely feels like when you're running the charge rifle in the sling, it feels like there's definitely better weapons you could be using in, as a third weapon so by itself pre-ultimate it's fine so even when you have your ultimate out same problem with the longbow now you have a beast of a charge rifle but the charge rifle gold isn't even that strong of a weapon all a gold charge rifle is this sight and then this uh sniper stock that's it so like why run this in the back pocket i think this is genuinely this may be the worst weapon that ballistic has as a third weapon. That's not me saying the charge rifle is bad. The charge rifle is broken. If you're gonna run charge rifle, you run that as your main weapon, not as your third weapon in the sling. With that in mind, the charge rifle, F tier easily. You're not getting any of the value that you want from Ballistic's Ultimate and from Ballistic's Passive. As a regular weapon, it's S tier, by the way. The charge rifle is so broken. It's so busted. It's ridiculous. Come on, like, just don't use it as your third. Run it as your main weapon, you goober. We got the Sentinel. Sentinel as a third weapon, also not ideal because it has to rock the iron sights. Even though it's in the back pocket, you can still hit it with the charge, which is always a nice plus, but not having a sight is a little bit of a, of a minus. With the Ultimate out, it already gets charged on the spot, by the way, which is kind of a big deal. So the Sentinel gets that immediate amp charge. So it can be a solid opener when you use your opener from like a distance and then push in with the rest of your weapons. On top of the fact that it has like a fast reload. So I would say like without the ultimate, it's okay. With the ultimate, it's pretty decent. 
genuinely. I would probably put the Sentinel in, I think like top of C tier is definitely the fair spot to put the Sentinel. Like it has utility and I think there's time and place to be running a fully charged Sentinel. I think that's the best part about it. The fact that Ballistic fully charges it. But beyond that, I just don't think running snipers as your third is the play. But this is where we're at so far with the snipers. The shotguns. I think the shotguns are kind of in the same boat as the snipers to be completely honest, but we'll see how this goes. So as a sling weapon, Mozambique, I don't know if you want to be rocking this on your sling. Mozambique without any attachments is like so, it's so mediocre. Yeah, sure if you land all your shots, it can get some kills, but there, there are other guns that are just better by, def by default. Oh, and by the way, like if you're running a third weapon, you have to still run that ammo type. So like either you're carrying an extra stack of shotgun ammo, which is weird, or you don't have any ammo for it. So I think that's another reason why snipers and shotguns aren't going to be that great of a third weapon is that you're not going to be seeing yourself running but two shotguns or two snipers to maximize using the third weapon because you don't want to carry a third ammo type. So I think that's one thing that pulls both of those gun types down versus like energy. You wouldn't mind running double energy or you wouldn't mind running double light or double heavy. That's another reason why these things get pulled down a bit. But even with the Ultimate. Let's see how the Mozambique feels. So with the ultimate, Mozambique is just, uh, I think it has hammer points, right? Yeah, it has hammer points, which does make it worth it. Like, genuinely speaking, like, having a hammer point fast shooting Mozambique is low-key very scary. I do think on that front, Mozambique as a weapon with the ultimate out, not terrible at all. I would never recommend it as your third weapon in general, but if you're primarily only gonna be using it for its ultimate, it's a good like finisher, right? You like do some damage with your main weapons, switch to the Mozambique that you have, bomb, get an instant kill. So where do I think it lands? I think the Mozambique is probably be like top of Sentinel high C tier. I think right there. I think top of C tier is a little bit more fair for the Mozambique. Eva shotgun, not a terrible third weapon. Eva by default is a pretty decent shotgun. You're not going to see me complain about an Eva shotgun in the back pocket. Carrying just a, a stack for the Eva shotgun, I think that's worth it. Because the Eva doesn't really need attachments to be decent. For that reason, I think the Eva is really good on that front. With ultimate, it gets a digi threat and it gets double tap, which normally I'm not a fan of double tap, but because it's double tap with unlimited ammo and really fast reload, it's so worth it. Like having that double tap. Oh, and you get the slide reload too. Oh, that's so cool. I didn't even think about that. Double tap with the slide reloading is, is nuts. I think overall it's pretty good, man. Nah, we all know where Ballistic's really hiding that third gun. Is he hiding it up his butt? The Eva shotgun kind of kind of busting, dude. Is it better than the wingman? I mean, gold wise, it's so useful, dude. Just having like that ability to just go crazy with a shotgun. So I definitely think it, like it's a little bit above the wingman in A tier. Solid A tier weapon right there. Next up, we got the Peacekeeper. I think the PK is just too good of a weapon to not be using as a main primary weapon. Like if you're going to be rocking a shotgun anyway, you might as well rock it as a primary. But like, let's see. The PK is very good by default. Definitely one of the weapons that doesn't need any attachments to be good. So having it as your third weapon, not terrible. The PK might be up there as one of the best third weapons, period, without an ultimate. With an ultimate, I mean, same thing. It's the Peacekeeper, man. Like, you can't go wrong. You got the slide reload. You can just go up and get that reload. Peacekeeper might be the only weapon that I almost think is a really solid sling weapon, but when it becomes gold, like, I don't think, like, it matters as much. A gold PK is, is cool and all, but, like, I think there's just better gold weapons. I just think it'd be better to have in your primary slot. I think I'll probably the Peacekeeper... I think, like, bottom eight's here. It's good, but they're just better. There's definitely some better weapons out there. We'll get to them, too. Next up, we got the Mastiff. Mastiff is also really good without any attachments, but with an ultimate... Boom. Boom. Having that fire rate is crazy. And the having the fast reload on the massive is huge because you have to reload every individual like shot. But having the bop 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 is a little bit nutty. Plus the slide reload. It's fine. I think the Peacekeeper and the Eva shotgun are just significantly better. They just outclass the Mastiff in general. It's probably the perfect example of a B tier weapon. Solidly B tier. Just like the Peacekeeper and the Eva shotgun, you'd rather just run it as a primary weapon. It's just simpler that way. We're moving on to the light weapons, starting with the P2020. I think the P2020 gets hammer points. I could be wrong. As a sling weapon though, it's the P2020, man. I don't love the P2020 even by default. It's such a mediocre weapon on drop. You'd rather have any other weapon on drop. However, with the ultimate, it do get kind of nuts. Kind of goes hard, dude. It kind of goes hard. You got the red dot sight. You got the fast fire rate. And you got the freaking hammer points. In the right hands, this thing is a monster. 
This is what the Mozambique wishes it could be, dude. Like, holy crap. Look at that range, too. With the digi thread and everything. Oh my god. I think the P2020 has potential as a sling weapon. It's nuts. Like, there's moments where you're like, damn, that, that, that went off. I would put the P2020, I think, solidly in B tier above the Mastiff. The ultimate is definitely carrying it. You don't want to ever use it as a third weapon without attachments. I don't think it's that strong in that regard. But with the ultimate, it's nutty. This is the sleeper hit, everybody. This is the one I've been wanting to talk about. I, I'm making this tier list because the RE45 is that awesome. One, the RE45, by default, not a terrible option as a sling weapon. Honestly, pretty great. But then on top of that, they decided RE45 with the ultimate gets hammer points. So it just melts. It absolutely melts. Holy moly guacamole. I just burnt my mom's cannoli. Like who thought this was legal? Oh my god. RE45 is a little bit nuts. I think as a third weapon, that extra bonus of getting the hammer points on the RE45, getting that extra damage, getting that incredible speed. And like I told you, I think Ballistic is better in close range than he is in long range. The RE45 excels tremendously in close range. With an RE45 in the back pocket, it's not a bad idea. It's honestly a great idea. And then running it with the ultimate is absolutely bonker billies. So this is our first S tier weapon. The R RE45. We love to see it. Next weapon is the alternator. Alternator as a sling weapon. I mean, it's fine. You guys know me. I'm not an alternator hater, but I just don't know why you would run this in your sling over like an R9 or like a car or any other SMG, right? Because with the ultimate, like it's nice. It has pretty decent damage. But I think the RE45 does its job better. The R31 does its job better. It's just completely outclassed. So I just don't see like a reason to be running this. It just doesn't do much. I think it's D tier. Above the longbow though. Sorry, alternators, lovers. I definitely think it's D tier. So unfortunate. Oh, we got the freaking beast of the weapon. You guys know me. R9 is just a good weapon. It's probably the best weapon right now in Apex Legends. Without attachments, so good. With the ultimate. It's a war crime. Fast reloading an R9 is a war crime. Ah, ah, oh, I'm sorry, I'm allergic to broken weapons. The only thing that's holding me back from putting it above the RE45 is that it doesn't get that much of a benefit. Gold is awesome, but I would rather be rocking the R9 as my main weapon. But I could see y'all running R9 as your main weapon and R9 in the back pocket and R9 as your second weapon. The triple R9, I've seen people do it. I've seen people do it and it's disgusting. But yeah, it's still S tier, guys. It's disgusting. I literally sneezed because of it. It's disgusting. Next one is the freaking uh, R301. The R301 without attachments is... Decent. So like you can still one clip if you all land all headshots, but most of the time you're gonna probably like land body shots and you can still do a ton of damage. So as like a default sling weapon, it's not bad, but with attachments, it's the R301, baby. I think it's amazing. It's definitely really, really good. And it's not a terrible option. I don't know if it's an S tier option. It, as a default sling weapon, is pretty mid. Probably put it, like, right below the Eva shotgun in A tier. At least R31, guys. Like, you, you can't go wrong with it, right? Well, we got the Spitfire. I thought, in theory, the Spitfire would make a really good weapon. And it's good because it when it becomes gold, it has the ability for you to reload in the back pocket. So I'll show you what that means, like, if I run, like, an alternator as a primary. But, like, as a just default sling weapon... The Spitfire, it's not an ideal weapon to have. I don't love its rate of fire. But I do love its crazy amount of ammo that you have. So that does make it really good. Its iron sizes are pretty terrible though, which is never fun to deal with. With the ultimate, you get a lot of bullets. And you don't even have to reload, you can switch weapons. You know, do some, do some, do some work with it. Boom, switch back to your sling weapon. Boom, fully, fully reloaded. It's gonna go full body shot. Look at that. Uh, I don't have to reload. Killed two whole people in one freaking clip. It's disgusting. Beyond that, like, not in love with the Spitfire. Probably put in, like, high C above the Mozambique. Nah, below the Mozambique. Right there. It's just not a good sling weapon. And when it comes to, like, running it as a third one, like, there's better ones, man. Next to it, we have our final light weapon. The G7 Scout. Absolutely one of the worst iron types in the game. You can't see anything. You will never see me running this as my sling weapon because of how bad it is without any attachments. Like, whoever thought this was a good idea is insane. It should be against the law. With the ultimate, though, it's a little bit better. But it gives you a 2x4. Anyway, regardless, though, it does get double tap, which is pretty disgusting. Which does make it a little bit of a beast. So, I can see you guys running it. You can definitely hit fire it if you want to. Like, if you think this is an option for you guys, 
All power to you. Would I run it personally? No, I don't love it. Okay. Yeah, like above the Sentinel, I think double tap is a little bit better than charging the Sentinel. So I'd put it there. Bottom seats here. We're on to the heavy weapons. First up, we got the Prowler. We're going to equip to the sling. Prowler, by default. Probably one of the best hip fires in the game, even with no attachments. Look at that. Look at that hip fire. Do you not see how good that hip fire is? If you're running the Prowler, do not aim with it. I mean, you can. It's not the worst if you aim with it. You could literally just do some nuts stuff with the hip fire. Look at that. Look at that hip fire. So if you like the Prowler, all power to you with the ultimate comes with a digit thread and it's just insanely accurate it's got the freaking maximum level red dot sight so your hip fire is disgusting <laughs> like it shouldn't be that good at range but it's it is yeah the purple laser goes crazy on the prowler i think it's just a little bit outclassed by a couple other weapons especially other smgs but it's not bad i think prowler is probably the top of b tier i think that's a fair place to put it top of b tier nothing wrong with it we're at the halfway point time to do a little uh little uh shameless plug you got me merch! You got my merch! Baby, ooh! Check out the hat. We got hats. We got shirts. We got hoodies. Boom. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Buy my merch. Yay. Anyway, we love the shameless plugs, okay? <laughs> What's next? The flatty line. You can't go wrong with flat line, okay? It's literally a beast of a weapon. Even without any attachments. Uh, they did nerf its hip fire a, a bit, but even then, the hip fire is still not that bad. And then when you use the ultimate, Get a two-time sight, and it just goes hard in the pain, dude. Oh, so my gooseness. It's insane, bro. I mean, it's the flatline, golden. So yeah, is it phenomenal? Would you run it over the R31? That's up to you. That's a matter of preference. So flatline, probably A tier, probably right below the R31. I think it just goes there. I do think it's just better as a main. Okay, moving on to the next one though. The next one is the 3030. I don't know if I love the 3030 with its iron sights. It's not terrible. Plus it reloads pretty fast, so that's kind of nice. But with the ultimate, you get the two by four again, which always pisses me off. Like. Uh, I think you get a uh, hammer points. Is this hammer points on it? Like, why is it so strong? It doesn't even get like the shotgun attachment thing though. I would actually think it'd be worth it if it had the, uh, the shotgun attachment. But its hitfire is already so good that you don't even need the shotgun attachment. I don't know how to feel about the 3030 guys. I don't know why you'd run it. It's in the same boat as me as a G7 Scout, but it's a little bit better than the Scout. A little bit better than the Spitfire. So like pretty mid, just C tier. Take it or leave it. Guys, I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. But the Rampage by default has always been pretty good. I believe even in the back pocket, you can still charge it. Yep. You can still charge it with a Thermite, which is always a good time. It has great iron sights. So you're not even upset that you don't have attachments. Like these iron sights are gorgeous. And then when you get the ultimate out, the Rampage immediately by default gets revved up. Do you see that? It immediately gets revved up. Dude, it's so gross immediately being revved is disgusting. That means it breaks doors, by the way. You guys know that, right? You guys know that when it's revved up, that breaks doors? I'll show you, because I feel like you don't believe me. Imagine you have a rampage in the back pocket. It gives you so much utility. Someone's hiding behind the door? Your ultimate becomes like a Sheila. Not only does that completely change the playstyle of Ballistic, but I would argue that this is not only a great sling weapon, but his best sling weapon. It is God tier. I can't believe I'm going to do this. Guys, do you hear that? S plus. The Rampage is disgusting. You have all witnessed it. God. Now we have the car. I mean, the car is always a good weapon. We like the car. By default, you can one clip still. It's just like the R9. It's got great hip fire. You don't even have to aim if you don't want to. It's got decent range, has decent reload speed. One of the biggest benefits the car has is that it can run both light and heavy. So you could essentially run this in the sling while running like your main weapon a flat line or the main weapon's R31 or the main weapon is something else that's light or heavy and you still have the ammo to use it in the sling. And then when the ultimate comes out, I mean, it's just, it's just the car guys. It's nothing like too crazy, but you know, not bad either. Is it as god tier as like, as the R99? No, but it's definitely up there. I think it's like mid, like middle of B tier. It's just something holding it back. I think it's because it doesn't get a huge boost from being a gold weapon. And I think the car, it doesn't have like hammer points or disruptor or anything. It's just B tier. It's just, it's okay. Our final weapons, which are the energy weapons. First off, we got the Havoc. The Havoc by itself is a monster. With no attachments in close range, it's an absolute beast. In mid range, as long as you're good at aiming, 
It's not terrible. And you can see yourself running like a nemesis in the main with the Havoc in the back pocket. Why would you do that? Because of this little thing right here. You see what this thing is right here? See this thing? Turbocharger. Turbochargers are notoriously very difficult to find. But you don't even got to worry about finding one when you have his ultimate. Because his ultimate gets you a freaking turbocharger. So it just immediately comes through. It's not the best at range though, honestly, but it's okay. We don't need it. Who needs range when you got a god tier weapon? Oh, that is nuts, man. Havoc is definitely S tier. What makes it even better is that you could still run it as a third weapon pretty easily because energy weapons are really good. That's always a fun time and I'm here for it. So, okay, next up we got the Devotion and my Gooseness. Okay, so the Devotion, I don't think you should be running it like as a sling. It's not terrible as a sling weapon. Like you can get in someone's face and just melt because it's an LMG and LMGs just melt people's face off. That's what they do. That's their entire purpose in life. But without an attachment, I don't 100% recommend walk, walk, rocking this bad boy. But if you need to, it's not the worst option in the pinch. It just takes forever to come out because it is an LMG. However, with the ultimate, it gets turbo charged. It has 50 freaking shots, 48 shots. That is a war crime. Look at that, I don't have to reload. You don't even have to reload. It shreds, and not having to look for a turbocharger makes it even better. Probably put it at the top of eight tier. I don't think it's a bad weapon at all to be rocking with ballistic as your third weapon. Like, if you're rocking it, you're in a good spot. Up next, we got the triple take. I don't understand why you would run the triple take, except that it does have a crazy hip fire now, so I get it. I'm a triple take fan. It's hip fire is God tier. Look at this. You don't have to aim if you don't want to. But, and then it has a great iron sight, so having it with no attachments is awesome. But with an ultimate, check this out. You have a charge up, and then you have, I think you have the slide. Oh no, you don't have the slide reload. I thought you'd have the slide reload. But either way, you have a lot more ammo. You have decently fast reload, and it works in close range, so I really like it. The fact that it can be used pretty easily because of its hip fire and close to long range during the ultimate is also great. So if you wanted to run like a long range weapon with Ballistics Ultimate, I do think the triple take is a solid pick. Better than the snipers, at least. Because unlike the snipers, it's good without attachments. Like bottom of eights here. I think that's fair. I also wish it had a three times scope, though. I'm not a fan of the two by four. But that's a personal preference. Okay, we got the Volt. Volt is one of my favorite weapons. I it's like you can't go wrong with the Volt, man. It's the Volt SMG. Like the thing one clips, it shreds. It feels like beyond accurate. Like you can't go wrong with it. When I mean, you get the ultimate out, it's got crazy hip fire now because of the because of the perfect uh red dot sight. It's got digi threat, which is also huge. Fast reload is nice. It's still accurate at range. And it's just shred like no other. So yeah, you can never go wrong with a golden bolt. Okay, but I think that's about it though. Like I think it's just slightly outclassed by other SMGs. I'd say top of B tier is where the Volt belongs. I think that's a fair spot to put it. Last but certainly not least, we have the newest weapon added to the game, the Nemesis. Now the Nemesis is one of the best guns in the game period. I, in my humble opinion, you should be rocking the Nemesis as your primary weapon. You should be running Nemesis period. Nemesis is so good. Nemesis is incredible. And I think you would rather have the sling slot be for a different weapon that isn't the Nemesis. However, However, the Nemesis, by default, phenomenal iron sights, so you can't go wrong with that. It's still very accurate without a uh, sight at mid to long range. And then when the ult comes out, look at that. Oh my god. It's just fully loaded. Like, you can't go wrong with a fully loaded Nemesis. And this hip fire is still in god tier, like it's crazy. Why did they design a weapon like this? The Nemesis, phenomenal weapon. Is it good as a third? I think so. I think it's not terrible. Is it the best primary weapon to use outside of the sling? Yes, but in the sling, I probably would put it just above the R301 in A tier. I think that's where it belongs. And I think that is it. So this is my tier list of the best weapons to put in ballistics sling, okay? Let me know in the comments down below if you agree with this list, if you disagree with this list, and if so, let me know what you think is the best and let me know what you think is the worst to have in ballistics sling. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for vibing. And if this becomes a video, play the outro now.